So our journey brings us right here, not to this Exxon station, but to that piece of land right over there across the street. It's a little hard to see right now, but we'll make our way over there. We had to park at this Exxon because it's the closest in proximity to that piece of land. That piece of land right over there is where the Sportatorium used to be. And for those of you who are wrestling fans or even live here in Dallas, know the Sportatorium. So let's make our way over there. So here you are. This is pretty much the land where the old Sportatorium used to be uh, on the corner of Riverfront Boulevard and hopefully I'm pronouncing this right, Cadiz Street which used to be called Industrial Boulevard until the city of Dallas changed it to Riverfront uh, after the Sportatorium was gone in hopes of developing this land into more of a family friendly area but as you can see that pretty much never happened the land's pretty much vacant since the whole sportatorium was uh, demolished so basically a little history here on the sportatorium stood right here as you can tell whole lots vacant now um, sportatorium came to life back in 1936 how some of the biz biggest names in the wrestling business Wild brawls unfolded as echoes cheered throughout the ten halls of that sportatorium, man. Uh, so, yeah, this is it. This is the whole land right here. It's no more. So, anyway, just a little brief history of the sportatorium. Uh, Everyone knows the Von Erichs. Everyone knows, doesn't matter if you're from Dallas, if you're a wrestling fan, everyone knows that name, the Von Erich. So the dad was Fritz Von Erich. He purchased World Class Championship Wrestling back in 1969. Sportatorium pretty much served at the, as the promotion's heart and soul. It was the home field for the Von Erichs. A stable of stars also went through those 10 halls, as they said. Um, you know, you've had, geez, I'm thinking off the top of my head here. Obviously the Freebirds, everyone knows that big rivalry. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Harley Race, Gorgeous George, Buddy Rogers, um, geez, Ric Flair uh, wrestled David Von Erich there back in 1984, I believe. Yep, 1984. Sorry, I'm checking my notes. I wrote down some notes down so I might make sure some of these are accurate. Um, Basically, the Sportatorium served as the battlefield for the long-running war between the Von Erichs and the Freebirds. So many battles went on in those halls. Um, their feud with the Freebirds, in some cases, probably is the best wrestling has ever seen. One of the biggest rivalries, if not the best rivalry of all time. Um, their energy at the Sportatorium provided uh, much fanfare. Fans would get into it if, you know, people took it seriously back in the Sportatorium days. Um, a lot of the th happenings there at the Sportatorium, fans would throw popcorn. They would throw debris in the ring when their heroes lost. So yeah, they took it seriously. There was a lot happening here in the old Sportatorium. Uh, again, the Sportatorium pretty much saw a lot of wrestling war uh, royalty enter the doors. Gorgeous George, as I said, came in the 1950s. Buddy Rogers wrestled there a decade before that. Harley Race defended his NWA world title there back in April of 1980. I said 84 earlier, sorry, against David Von Erich. Uh, Blackjack Mulligan, uh, Shawn Michaels, King Kong Bundy, Bruiser Brody. Um, pretty much a who's who uh, came into the Sportatorium. So um, even Stone Cold Steve Austin, back before he was Stone Cold, he battled uh, Chris Adams back in the uh, late 80s there. And Cactus Jack, he was also known as... Uh, Cactus Jack Manson back in uh, the 80s when he wrestled at the Sportatorium. Anyway, as World Class Championship Wrestling, basically how the whole story goes, uh, slowly started to fold during the 1990s. And, you know, other promotions came into the Sportatorium. Uh, Global Wrestling Federation, United Wrestling Association got their foothold in the building as well. Uh, basically, none of those partnerships lasted, though, with the Sportatorium. Pretty much at that time, the Sportatorium was near, was near death, to say the least. Uh, 
not many federations coming through there. It wasn't making money. And it, it was just a dilapidated old building. They called it the Tin Walls because it was, it looked like a big tin can. Um, but back in 2000, a uh, fire caught up the Sportatorium, which pretty much ended it, basically. That was the final nail in the coffin. And then the city pretty much deemed it a hazard after that. And then after that, demolition came and the sportiums, Sportatorium's days were numbered in 2003. That's pretty much when it was uh, demolished. So that's it. That's the land. This is the former lot of the Sportatorium here in Dallas. The home field base of the Von Eriks. Now it's, all that's left here is just this. They never developed anything on this land. It just sits vacant where the Sportatorium once stood. So anyway, just wanted to do this part before we went over to this, the uh, see the Von Erichs grave sites. You know, figured this would be a good part of history to show, you know, leading up to the uh, Von Erichs grave. So anyway, this is where it stood. Former home of the Sportatorium right here on the corner of Riverfront and Cadiz. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's Cadiz, Cadiz, I don't know. Really, it doesn't matter. But this is it right here. All right. Me and Liz are going to head over to the to the graveyard. There she is, my co-director right there. She's doing a hell of a job. All right, headed over to the graveyard. So here we are. Next stop brings us right here to Grove Hill Memorial Park. It was about, I don't know, maybe a 19, 20 minute drive from where the Sportatorium lot is. So anyway, in this cemetery is pretty much where we'll find all of the Von Erics. They're all buried in there, way back in there. It's a pretty uh, big cemetery, so I had to get a map to find the graves. But uh, yeah, we'll make our way back in there. But I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of the interest to the cemetery itself. It's really nice. All right, we're going to go ahead and make our way in there and find the graves of the Von Erichs. So, as you can see, we've made our way to the Von Erichs gravesite. Uh, it's a pretty big cemetery. It's, uh, yeah, if you don't know where you're going, you could easily get lost in here. So, but hey, thankfully, I was able to uh, map out where to go. So, the Von Erich gravesite is, uh, they're all in one area, but they're not together, if that makes sense. They're all not side by side. They are in one area, but kind of scattered around. So, so, but the first one we come to is literally right off the road here. And that's Jack Atkinson. He was the youngest of the Von Erichs that passed away. He was only six years old. Um, yeah, he died in 1959. Uh, what happened to him was he was accidentally shocked and knocked unconscious by an exposed wire. Uh, once that happened, he drowned in a puddle. Then that's where the uh, Von Erich curse started, as they say. Jack Atkinson, the youngest, right there. Only six. And then a little ways up, whoa, don't want to step on that. That's a fresh one. That's from somebody passed away from 2020. Let's walk around that. Don't want to be disrespectful. The next one's easy to find. You can, it's just maybe six tombs, or excuse me, seven. Seven rows up. Right here is David Atkinson, David Von Eric, as his wrestling name was. He was known as the Yellow Rose of Texas. That's what they called him. And David, unfortunately, passed away in 1984. He was passed. He passed away in Tokyo, Japan. Now this was a bit of a controversial death because the U.S. Embassy's death report said he died of acute enteritis. I'm not really sure what that is. I'd have to ask Elizabeth. Um, but yeah. So, but Ric Flair wrote in his autobiography that. Everyone in wrestling believes that it was a drug overdose that really killed him. And Bruiser Brody, who was a fellow rest, who a fellow wrestler who found David uh, dead in his hotel room, disposed of the narcotics by flushing him down a toilet before the police arrived. Now Mick Foley also backs up those claims that he died from apparent drug overdose. So, so that's, that's what they're saying uh, compared to what the death report says of uh, acute enteritis. But yeah, regardless how he died, I mean. It's such a shame, anyway. 
But yeah, here's David Von Erich's tombstone. You can see the yellow roses people have put out here for him. And right behind, uh, actually right in front of uh, the other Von Erich we were just at is Mike Von Erich. Right, right in front of David. So, yeah, Mike Von Erich, he was actually the fifth son. Let me get in there a little bit. It's hard to see with the sun casting that shadow. Yeah, he was actually the fifth son of uh, Fritz Von Erich, and he was known as the Inspirational Warrior. So, basically, Mike replaced David in the feud with the Von Erichs that the Von Erichs had with the Freebirds following David's death. But basically, for Mike, though, he didn't want to be a uh, wrestler. He wanted to work as a cameraman with World Class. He had no interest in being a f in the ring full time. His only previous involvement on screens was being involved in a in a feud where Ric Flair insulted him and then wrestled him as a um, payoff match. That was it. But his dad Fritz forced him into the ring after David's death. Mike had to retire from wrestling after not being able to return to the ring at full strength. He committed suicide April 12th, 1987, overdosing on a tranquilizer. Let's see if you can see that. But yeah, you still see people come out here and putting flowers out and everything. So right next to Michael, literally right to the right, because Michael's right there, and Chris Von Erich is right here. There's an interesting story about Chris. He uh, he was a short, the shortest of the Von Erichs. He was only 5'4". Unfortunately, he had asthma and extreme brittle bones that were prone to breaking. So his career in the ring, it, it, yeah, it, it didn't work out so well for Chris. Uh, you know, with those in mind, he was able, able to reach the success his father and his brothers had. He tried, though. He made many attempts to succeed in the squared circle due to his love of the wrestling business. But due to all that... The asthma, the brittle bones, it, it kept him from reaching any kind of peak as his brothers did. Um, yeah, after several years of uh, going through that, not being able to succeed in the business, Chris ended up becoming depressed and was frustrated. He was also heartbroken of the, over the loss of his brother Mike. So 1991, 18 days before his 22nd birthday, he committed suicide via a gunshot to the head. There's Chris Von Eric Stone. And that brings us over here, probably the most famous of the Von Erichs. That's Carrie Von Erich right there. Yeah, to say Carrie Von Erich was the most famous, uh, or the most, most well known, is put in my league. This guy, before his WWE or WWF days back then, he was known as the modern day warrior. And then when he went to WWF, became the Texas Tornado. Um, he ended up winning uh, the NWA World Heavyweight title from Ric Flair at the David Von Erich Memorial, uh, which was a tribute show to his deceased brother. Then when he was in WWE, he won both the WWF, I should say, because it was WWF back then. Um, he won the Intercontinental Championship at SummerSlam, August 27, 1990. So... What happened was, Kerry had a lot of problems, basically. He was in a motorcycle accident that nearly ended his life. He suffered a dislocated hip. If I can get a little closer. Yeah, he suffered a uh, dislocated hip. Uh, he also suffered a uh, badly injured foot, which eventually had to be amputated. According to his brother, Kevin... And Carrie injured the foot following surgery by attempting to walk on it prematurely, thus forcing the doctors to amputate it. But he continued to wrestle after the accident with a prosthesis and kept the amputation a secret to the majority of the fans and fellow wrestlers, even going to the extreme of showering with his own boots on. He's very self-conscious about that. But after all said and done, um, after the amputation of his foot, he became addicted to painkillers, uh, followed up by several drug problems. Um, unfortunately, Kerry Von Erich committed suicide with a single gunshot to the heart with a 44 caliber on the 18th of February, 1993, on his father's ranch. And I had a quote here, because his father, Fritz Von Erich, was actually interviewed shortly afterwards. You know, Fritz said, uh, uh, Kerry Von Erich came to the house after 
after Fritz hasn't seen him in two weeks, and Carrie basically gave his father a hug. And he says, I'm going to go back and find a quiet spot out in the field. He goes, I need to do some thinking. Well, then Fritz became a little worried because several hours went by and Carrie never went to pick up his kids from school. So he went out to look for him about 2.15 because he got worried. And when he found him, he found the Jeep that Carrie drove down to the field in empty. And then he found his body partially hidden behind a thicket. And right next to Kerry Von Erich, that is Fritz Von Erich. He uh, passed away in 1997 due to lung cancer that spread to his brain. But uh, yeah, he was known in Japan when he wrestled in Japan. He was known as the Iron Claw, and as you know, that's that was the Von Erich's finishing move was the Iron Claw. So over in Japan, that's what they called uh, Fritz Von Erich became nicknamed the Iron Claw, so that's where all that started. But I wanted to show you also next to next to their grave is the mother of the Von Erichs right here, Doris. And I thought she died way before 2015. I guess not. But six years ago, back in... Almost six years ago, I should say. Back in 2015. Right there. It's Doris Von Erich. So they're all... All the Von Erichs are pretty much together. I mean, they're not side by side. The rest of the Von Erichs are right over that, that direction next to that bush. But they're in close proximity proximity to each other, so. Anyway, if you ever wanna come out here and visit, you're a wrestling fan or, heck, if you're just a Texas person that knows the Von Erichs, who doesn't know them in this state? If you wanna come out here and give your respects and just see the graves, make sure you look it up online because it's not easy to find. It's It's a big cemetery and they're way, way back here. So you can get lost in here and spend hours just trying to find the uh, grave site. So anyway, so anyway, that's it. We um, did a little sportatorium history and concluded it with coming out here to see the uh, Von Erich's graves. It's the first time I've ever been out here. And after living in Texas for all these years, I've never been out this uh, direction. I've always meant to, but never have. So. Why not uh, make that my first YouTube video? So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I was a little bit nervous, but uh, I'm sure hopefully I'll get better as the videos go on. So um, so go easy on me. I tried. And Elizabeth, is, she's back in the car. She's over there. That's my co-director. She's doing a heck of a job, though. I guess she's directing from the car. Anyway, we're headed out now. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll do this again soon on a different topic. Thanks.